Did you know that the way you breathe impacts your metabolism, your immune system, and your heart health? Welcome back to the show. My name is Sarah, and today I have Sachin Patel with me to talk all about the breath and how this is so integral to your health. If you have someone in your life who snores or does a lot of mouth breathing or maybe struggles with metabolic issues, this is a foundational piece that you're going to want to address and learn more about. The good news is that Sachin actually gave me a ton of free resources that I want to share with you as my community. So make sure that you head down to the show notes to check out those free resources that Sachin is sharing with all of you. And he was a speaker on the Health Transformation Summit that I did with my partner, Carrie Bennett, just recently. So if you missed the summit, you can still get that on replay, as well as two courses, one from me, one from Carrie, as a part of that package. So I will make sure to put that link in the show notes as well, in case you missed the summit. On today's episode of the Evolving Wellness Podcast, we're going to talk about that and so much more. So stay tuned. Before we jump into this episode today with Sachin, I want to thank a couple of sponsors for helping make the show possible. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. They are a fantastic source for circadian glasses. You can use my code Yogi to save 15% over there at Viva Rays, and the link will also be in the show notes for you. They also have fantastic eye masks and earplugs. While you're working on those breathing mechanics, make sure that you protect those other areas as well. And the second sponsor of today's show is Upgraded Formulas. I absolutely love their magnesium formula. It is a nanoparticle technology, so it actually bypasses the gut. If you're someone with gut issues and you worry about absorption, then check out Upgraded Formulas. Use my code YOGI12 or YOGI if you've already used that one before to get their nanoparticle technology magnesium. They also have a fantastic hair tissue mineral analysis with a consultation. I definitely recommend getting that consultation if you're curious about the mineral balance in your body. So thank you for sponsoring today's shows to my two sponsors. And let's go ahead and jump into the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to talk about something we've really never talked about in depth. And I'm so excited for today's guest. Sachin, welcome to the show. Sarah, thank you. I am so pumped, so excited and inspired, no pun intended, to have this conversation with you. Wonderful. Well, so we're going to talk about breath and that's a broad topic. I think a lot of people are maybe familiar with James Nestor's work and I love his book. Uh, it's really great to understand the breath a little bit more. Let's talk a little bit about you and how you got into studying this and, and what you do, how you apply these things. Absolutely. So my, my journey is kind of convoluted, and I think most journeys uh, are that way. So it, it's a combination of my son and his dental health, uh, my wife and her dental health. And then also, uh, for me, I was looking for the, the zenith of health and healing, which is something that's the simplest thing to do, but also has the biggest domino effect on the body. So it's been my quest as a practitioner to find that. And I also had my own personal breathing uh, and breathwork experience. So it was a combination of things. So I've kind of studied this from the quantum space, like how does this affect us? How does it affect our energetic signature? How does it affect our matrix? And it affects all those things. And then I wanted to figure out how does it affect us physically and it affects those things. It affects our facial structure, affects our spinal structure, our posture, all of those things are uh, determined, by, uh, determined by breathing. And I also wanted to understand it from a dental perspective, because as we know, the, the mouth is a window into the digestive system and into the cardiovascular system and into the immune system in many ways. Our immune system starts in our nose and we just went through this whole pandemic and nobody talked about breathing and how by simply changing the way you breathe, you activate your immune system versus suppress your immune system. And so there's just so many confounding factors that led me down this road. And every problem I was trying to solve, whether it was for my son's health, for my wife's health, for uh, my practice and discovering what that simple thing was, and then also just with everything that was happening in the world, all roads led to breath. And I'm probably like you in many ways. I Once I discover something, I just like to go as deep as I can. And I'll be the first to admit that I'm just, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of the surface. So imagine like the world's best free diver. They only, I mean, I say only, they only go 400, you know, feet down. 
uh, holding their breath on a single breath and come back up, but the ocean is six miles deep. So that's what breath is like for me. It's like I can go deep on this topic and probably deeper than, than most people because of how much time I've spent studying it, but it's, it's an ocean. So there's so much that, uh, that I, I know I'm going to learn as I continue down this path. And my, you know, really my goal today, as, as I said, before we started recording is if I can just bring people up to where I am and I'll keep going and learning and keep sharing as I keep learning, then I think that'll be a huge step forward for a lot of people's health. And, um, I'm also looking for quick and measurable. Like that's another thing that's important to me. And the fastest way to assess your breathing is right now. We can do it while we're on this conversation, while we're on this uh, uh, call and people are listening. If they're, if they're tuning in, they'll be able to check in with themselves. You can measure it. So within 60 seconds, I can understand how well your mitochondria are functioning. And it's more accurate than anything else you're going to do. And I can improve it very quickly in a measurable way as well. And, and so it's just like, it just checks off all the boxes for me. And that's what, that's what caught me into it. And that's what kind of keeps me, keeps me going deeper. That's so fascinating. I mean, there's, so, I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Because there's so many places we can go. And it's funny. Um, one of my clients was really struggling with the under eye bags. And I was like, you know what? Why don't you try mouth taping? I know we're doing all this other stuff, but like, do you tape your mouth at night when you sleep? Do you think you mouth breathe? And she was like, I don't think so. Started mouth taping. Literally within three days, the under eye bags were completely gone. I was like, okay, well, there's something to this. And I know like probably like a, nothing compared to what you know about breath. But I do know that a lot of people have this chronic um, issue of mouth breathing during the day. And then at night that exacerbates things and can lead to a host of health issues. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, uh, and, and I know we'll go into this uh, much deeper as we get started, but if, if all people did was simply change the hole in their face, which they breathe through, it would completely change their life. And there's overwhelming evidence that demonstrates this. It's the simplicity in the design, um, you know, and as we get go down this rabbit hole, it'll become crystal clear as to why we should breathe through our nose as much as we possibly can and through our mouth as little as we possibly can. And about 50% of people are habitual mouth breathers during the day and 66% of people breathe through their mouth at night. So statistically, if you're listening to this, if your spouse or your significant other <laughs> sleeps, with their, sleeps with their mouth closed, the stats are that you probably sleep with your mouth open. Um, and I and so it's something that once you start observing, you start you start realizing. And so, yeah, I would say that it's super important if you learn nothing else, if people just like tune out after this, the th most important thing people can start doing is placing their tongue in the correct position and breathing in and out through their nose. Fascinating. Yeah, it's something I think people overlook because they want to just, and you know, my audience is familiar with me telling them to quit hyper-focusing on diet and macro tracking and how many steps you get and all that stuff like it's important but there's fundamentals that we need to really address and I think breath belongs in that fundamental area of something that can make a huge change even in your metabolism because I know that there you know if you're mouth breathing at night you're not there's an there's a metabolic issue happening as well is that correct yeah so when we sleep that's the most parasympathetic thing that we do and the breath is the nervous system steering wheel. So it's like you can drive to work unconsciously and get from point A to point B with making very few decisions. And you can breathe unconsciously throughout the entire day and not realize that you were doing it. So I think for a lot of people that uh, bringing breath to their awareness is one of the big first steps that they can take, but not just while they're conscious, while they're unconscious. See, the only muscle that stays activated 24 seven in your body is your diaphragm. Every other muscle shuts off when you're sleeping, except your diaphragm. And so at rest is when we are most parasympathetic, which is when every cell tissue organ and system in our body is healing and reprogramming itself and getting rid of toxins from the day. Just like we go to sleep and kind of reset our, our bodies doing the same thing, our brain, our digestive organs and everything, our immune system. However, 
uh, the way we breathe is actually like taking the steering wheel and and the gas pedal and putting our foot on the gas when really what we want to have is our car in neutral and or in park uh, and not moving right so the way we breathe informs our nervous system so if we breathe through our mouth we're informing our nervous system we're in fight or flight and the breath overrides everything else so you know right now for example i can have you breathe a certain way and whether you like it or not your heart rate's going to go up and your blood pressure is going to go up because the physical nature of the lungs you know expanding contracting and the diaphragm moving up and down i mean 40 percent of your blood pressure that your heart creates actually comes from your lungs and your diaphragm your diaphragm is referred to as your second heart so people with high blood pressure usually have a weak diaphragm not a blood pressure problem wow so so when you're sleeping at night if you're breathing in a parasympathetic way breathing in and out through your nose slowing down your breathing you're going to get into a much deeper healing state so one of my one of my mentors um, charles poliquin he's now uh, deceased but oh yeah he uh so i used to teach his his uh courses and so okay so you probably know rob then rob jacobs uh not personally but uh but i know the name so yeah, he was, he was training me when, uh, Poliquin passed and they were like super close. So, okay. So, so, uh, so I, w I would go and teach the level one and two bioprint course. And so I had a chance to spend a lot of time with Charles, uh, individually. And we went on flights together and got stuck at airports together. So it's just, I got to see a, a side of him that many people don't see. And one of the things that he said was, uh, the first question I asked him, what's the first question you ask your athletes when you work with them? And he said, it's not how much they bench, not how much they squat, not has nothing to do with their macros, has everything to do with how well they sleep. So even in people who are performing at the highest levels, that's the first question that people ask. Uh, you know, one thing I remind people of uh, is, and, and this is kind of where my brain goes, is the um, how important something is to me is determined by how long we can go without it. So you can go without eating for weeks, right? For some people, months. Yeah. Um, you can go without water for a few days. You can go without sleep maybe two days, but you can't go without breathing for more than five to seven minutes. And for most people, it's like three minutes. So our mitochondria require, our mitochondria die within five seconds. So if they don't get enough oxygen, they die within five seconds. Now, when we stop breathing, our CO2 concentrations in the body go up and the body starts dumping more oxygen as a last mechanism for survival. So that's why it takes us a while to... So our mitochondria need oxygen, and that's the only place we use oxygen in our body, is in the mitochondria. And so, you know, we need that process, that delivery to take place. And the breath is one of the key factors that play a role in delivering oxygen to the tissue. Wow. So if you're not breathing correctly, you're not getting your mitochondrial health, mitochondrial health is going to suffer. And we know that that is crucial to our overall health, that a lot of diseases, uh, most of them are linked to some sort of mitochondrial dysfunction. So that would make perfect sense. That breath really, I would say, is up there, <laughs> up there with the foundations. And a lot of people, like you said, are mouth breathing and that that could be really contributing to a lot of the health issues that people are dealing with correct well how we breathe is directly correlated to our mitochondrial health so for example the only reason uh, you know the the oxygen that we get from the air that we breathe in uh, first of all we only use about 25 percent of it 20 to 25 percent of it with each breath so 75 percent of it we excrete the oxygen gets delivered to our mitochondria and the byproduct of mitochondrial respiration, which is the exhaust that comes out of our body, out of every cell, is water and CO2. Mm. So our body's pretty amazing, right? Imagine like all we have to excrete is CO2 and water, and that's the byproduct of energy production in our body. Well, the reason we breathe out is to excrete the CO2. Yeah. And so the whole process of breathing is directly correlated to mitochondrial function. If we can't get rid of the CO2, the cells die. And if we can't get oxygen to them, the cells die. So we need that process happening all the time. I mean, this is why when, you know, when somebody's born, the first thing we pay attention to is, are they breathing? Right. And when somebody passes away, we're hopefully, you know, 
blessed enough to be present for their last breath, right? Nobody says I was there for their last heartbeat, right? Right. They say they were there for their last breath. Breath. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, you mentioned the the dental aspect that that was something that you had looked in for your son and your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, how much does that play a part? And maybe we could just go there a little bit. Yeah, great question. So so that's really where the chiropractor in me uh, stepped in. And, uh, I, you know, I've been working kind of more in a consulting practice. Um, and kind of away from the structural side of things for a few years, but you never, you never lose it. So you always see things from that lens. And so when my son was growing up, uh, we didn't, I didn't know any of this. So I'm embarrassed to say that this was not taught to me in school. Like nobody taught it to me. And sometimes you learn things the hard way. So if you have young children, I know you do, it's crucial that you pay attention to this because this will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. It will save you uh, needless suffering for your child, and it will set them up to be uh, to basically live longer. But it happens while their facial structure is being developed, and the key muscle in our facial structure development is the our tongue. So the placement of our tongue completely changes the way our face forms. So when children breathe through their mouths, their tongue sits in the bottom of their mouth, or if they're born with a tongue tie, which is more prevalent now than ever before. Yep. then their tongue can't sit in the roof of their mouth. So there's nothing pushing their face outwards. And so what ends up happening is if the tongue sits in the bottom, you know, gravity and, and anatomy kind of does its thing. And, every, you know, things don't grow out unless they have pressure to grow out. Otherwise, they, came, they cave in. So his palate, uh, it's very subtle. It's just a few millimeters, but his upper palate uh, was underdeveloped, which meant that he couldn't bite over his front two teeth. And when, when they did an x-ray, they discovered that his, um, his uh, teeth were crowded. So we went to several different dentists and they said that they wanted to remove teeth. Yeah. And, and this is very common, uh, more common than I think it should be. And I'm like, oh, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, I've always kind of had this philosophy that God don't make no junk. So, so there, like, I can't imagine that dentists have been around since, since the beginning of, of humankind and no other animals need dentists. Why do humans need dentists? And so I, so then that became a question, uh, for me to start asking. And then, so we went to several different dentists and that's right around the time I read James's book. Mm. And, and then once I read that, I'm like, oh, this makes perfect sense. He's a mouth breather. He had all the symptoms of mouth breathing, you know, rambunctious behavior, mm. um, he would, uh, and, and he's a sweet kid, so I'm not pa trying to paint him in a negative light, but sometimes it would be hard to control his behavior. And we're like, oh, he's just a boy. Oh, he takes after his uncle. Like, you know, we would just come up with all these yeah. excuses, but it turns out he was mouth breathing. And so when we breathe incorrectly, we're kind of trapped in our bodies and we create certain emotion in our body. It's, it's basically a biological process. So you, if you breathe incorrectly, you're going to create more fight or flight neurotransmitters. If you breathe incorrectly, you're going to make more cortisol, right? Like it's just, that's what your breath signature does uh, because the breath is a tool. So if I hammer, if I pull out this tool, which is a style of breathing, it's going to do a specific predictable thing in my body. Uh, he would drool at night. So that's another sign your children are mouth breathers. Uh, and so well, we thought it was so cute. We took like all kinds of fun pictures with him mouth, you know, with, with his tongue hanging out while he's sleeping. But the price of all that is that his his tongue wasn't sitting in the right position, uh, pushing his his palate forward and outwards. And when the tongue is in the correct position, it forces us to breathe through our nose. You can't breathe through your mouth when your tongue is positioned correctly. So it's like a it's a double whammy. And so what that allows for it allows for a um, your your palate to form correctly. So we went, ended up finding a dentist who's about 90 minutes away from where we live, but worth the drive. And she put a palatal expander in. Okay. And a palatal expander is essentially a, an expensive artificial tongue. Does it look kind of like a little like omega sign? It's like a little arch. Yeah. And it, yeah, and you install it in the back and it, they, they have palatal expanders that go outwards and forwards. Yes. And so, uh, so we had that installed in him, which is basically an artificial tongue. Right, like if your tongue was sitting in that position the whole time, then you wouldn't need this uh, right. expander to expand your palate. But we had to be a little bit more aggressive. So, so through that process, now his bite is so much better. 
Mm. Right. But if his tongue was in the right position the whole time, then he wouldn't have had to have all this dental work done. Uh, in fact, the first time we took him to a dentist, he had a ton of cavities. And so the dentist is like, you know, Mr. Patel, we've got good news and bad news. I said, okay, what's the bad news? And they're like, your son has a lot of cavities. And we're like, we thought we had failed as parents because we're like, we're feeding him healthy. He's not eating this junk. Like, what the heck? And, uh, and I was like, what's the good news? He's like, well, it's all his baby teeth. So we don't have to like, you know, do and we don't have to do anything. They're just going to fall out. Uh, but that was another sign that he was a mouth breather because mouth breathing is a number one cause of cavities. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Because it, uh, it, it dries out our microbiome, right? Our saliva is very protective. Our, sal our saliva maintains our oral microbiome. It has enzymes in it that uh, prevent tooth decay, right? And gum disease. And so this is why when people have a lot of stress, they reduce their saliva production and their teeth start rotting out of their face. And it all has to do with their fight or flight response. And when you're breathing in fight or flight, you're usually breathing through your mouth. So that compounds the problem. Okay. So now can this cause like root canal issues as well? Or is it just cavities? Well, I, I would su suspect that any issue associated with the mouth is worsened by breathing through your mouth. Mouth breathing. Okay. And so the other thing to, to note for, for mouth breathing, since we're on the topic, is that your mouth is the, you know, if you ask any microbiologist, your mouth is the dirtiest part of your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So imagine the air that's coming in, whatever the quality is, and we all know indoor air quality is the lowest it's ever been. You're now adding bacteria to it because you're inhaling those bacterial particulates and their gaseous waste products and everything that they produce you're inhaling that right into your lungs. And your lung has a microbiome, right, that is now being altered because you're breathing in all this bacteria that doesn't belong there. But if you're breathing through your nose, on the other hand, it pressurizes the air, it moisture t regulates the air, it temperature regulates the air, and it also kills the bacteria and viruses that are in it because our nasal mucosal membrane makes nitric oxide. And nitric oxide kills bacteria, viruses, and pathogens on contact as are part of our in own initial immune defense against the air that we breathe in. And it also helps dilate our blood vessels, uh, which helps lower our blood pressure and increases circulation. So just by simply breathing through our nose, like all, there's a whole cascade of things that automatically start happening for us. Our nervous system becomes regulated. Our immune system isn't breathing in all this dirty air. Our oral microbiome is being protected right? So all of these things start happening. And that's just a handful of things. Uh, we get 20% more oxygen when we breathe through our nose. We, we're, because of that increased pressure uh, that's, that occurs, we get more uh, depth in our breaths so or alveoli expand, which also means we're able to get rid of the CO2 more efficiently. So it's just like that one thing changes everything without us having to think about all of those things. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so if, so if your partner is snoring, that's not good. That's, that's not good at all. And that can lead to, I guess, all kinds of problems, heart issues, uh, autoimmune issues. Like let's maybe, I know snoring is a sensitive topic, but maybe we can dive into that a little bit. <laughs> and then I still have some more dental questions, but I'm like, the snoring thing is, is very interesting, I think. Yeah, snoring is, um, I actually wrote a whole guide on how to stop snoring in seven days. And it was something, it was an issue that I had and mm -hmm. under the right circumstances or the wrong circumstances, I'll still snore, but there's mm -hmm. a formula to stop snoring. And, and so I went down that rabbit hole myself. And one mm -hmm. of the first things I realized is the first stage of snoring is denial mm -hmm. because we're sleeping. We can't hear ourselves. You don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Th there'll be times my wife would have shaken me awake and she'd be like, you're snoring. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm still awake. <laughs> like I was, I just thought I was still awake in my head. Right. And, wow. uh, and so then I got an app, it's called snore lab and there's, mm -hmm. I, I bet there's a bunch of them out there. I have no affiliation with them, but that's the one I use. And, and so that records you while you're sleeping. So now wow. I could hear myself and I realized that, oh my God, I'm, I do snore. This is how it sounds. And this is how much I actually snore. So mm -hmm. then it became like my personal quest to figure this out because how I breathe at night is actually the, is so deterministic and how I'm going to feel and heal that yes. I ha if I don't fix this, then all the other things I'm doing are not going to work as well. So, mm -hmm. so that became my quest to, to figure that out. So 
Uh, I discovered uh, tongue exercises that you can do, swallowing exercises that you can do, daytime breathing exercises that you can do, and positioning exercises. I, I got uh, an oil called Nasia oil, and I put that in my uh, nose, and that uh, helps uh, clear my sinuses, but it also helps ah. maintain a healthy uh, sinus microbiome. microbiome. Mm -hmm. So so these are things that I started doing to to kind of improve my respiration. And I, I can tell you what, I have nights where I have zero snoring. Amazing. And I know that I know what I, how I have to set myself up for success. So it's really uh, important for the people figure this out. If they do snore at night, it's a growing yes. issue. And, yes. you know, I would say that if, if your partner snores, that is effect, affecting their life expectancy. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't realize this, but when we snore, we become more insulin resistant. We also dry out our oral microbiome. And studies have shown cavities, more dental issues, more dental issues, more placking. Studies have shown people who snore are more likely to develop uh, metabolic disorders like diabetes mm -hmm. and and also Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a metabolic disorder. Mm -hmm. So all of yes. these things start happening as a result of our body not being able to go into a deep state of healing at night because of the way we're breathing or dysfunctionally breathing. And then there's the issue with nitric oxide as well, correct? Yep. When you're snoring, your body is going to naturally not produce as much nitric oxide. Am I right in that? Yep, absolutely. So breathing okay. through our nose increases nitric oxide production mm -hmm. about sixfold, and then humming wow. increases it 15-fold. Okay. Let's get, get one of some people I know are about to start humming. <laughs> uh, well, one of the, one of the things since we're on the topic is, uh, what affects the oral microbiome in addition to mouth breathing is, uh, mm. mouthwashes. So mm -hmm. antiseptic mouthwashes like Listerine and Crest, we, we probably want to avoid those things. Um, what about toothpaste? You got to be careful. It, can with it do the same thing? Yeah. You yeah. got to be careful with toothpaste. I mean, some toothpaste are just loaded with artificial, ingredients and okay. chemicals and things like that. So uh, I use a, a mushroom infused toothpaste. It's made by a company oh, okay. called Organo and uh, okay. it's like an all natural toothpaste and, and it's infused with uh, reishi mushroom. So it helps with ah. reducing inflammation in the gums. Well then I'm going to have, I have a new rabbit hole to look down. I've been using rise. Well, um, rise. Well sent me a ton of toothpaste for the, my son loves it. He's 16 months. He like begs to have his teeth brushed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Risewell mouthwash, I'm trying to get everybody to not throw the Listerine out of the house and use that. I haven't used any mouthwash in years. So that's, I'm like, let's, let's get all this crap out and use this stuff. Cause I think that yeah. the, the teeth, the stuff people are putting in their mouths and uh, it's yeah. And the fluoride at the dentist, it's like, that's a whole other, it's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things uh, we have, we have that mouthwash as well. My son and my wife use it. Um, what, one of the things that I found works also well is uh, peppermint essential oil. So oh, I'll put okay. a, put a drop of peppermint a essential dab. oil, uh, on my tongue and that'll freshen my breath instantly. And it also, I find it, it creates, increases my alertness because peppermint tends mm. to do that. And it also opens up my sinuses. So I find that okay. that's it. That's also a good remedy for some people. Now I've been, I don't know how you feel about this. Um, I've been doing oil pulling with a dab of peppermint oil in it. Uh, every morning and every night just put it in there swish drives my husband crazy because then he'll start trying to have a conversation with me and I'm like you know because <laughs> you got to do it for a while but I've I've really been loving the oil pulling and then I brush afterwards but yeah yeah I've um I've, I've tried that in the past I can't say I'm very consistent with it but it's a yeah. it's a habit it's a whole thing <laughs> yeah deep well deep and I have uh, we just recently talked about this we're like we need to get back onto oil pulling because we're actually working with a yeah. group of dentists uh, in a cohort right now and um and so we're going down that dental rabbit hole ourselves and we're like oh you know what can we teach what can we teach these folks but we can't teach it or tell them to do it until we're doing it first so right <laughs> so we're 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 doing that and then another thing that we're doing with uh, dental health is something called perio protect and so these are trays. You just get the trays fitted once and you put a, you put a gel in there that helps rebuild the oral microbiome. Oh, and so okay. people really, people really love that as well. Okay. Yeah. The, the dental thing I think is so huge. Um, I, my son is getting teeth and 
his teeth have little gaps in between them. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know if that's okay. But a friend of mine, Dr. Um, Jalal Khan, he's been on the show before. He was like, oh no, that's really, really good that he's got the little, little gaps. It shows his jaw is big enough because I see some babies and their teeth, even as babies, their teeth are like, you know, right flush up against one another. But his teeth all have <laughs> these little spaces, which looks a little bit odd. Um, but I'm like, okay, this is a good, this is a good sign. He's... <laughs> His jaw is developing properly. Yeah, it's actually preferred over yeah, over the opposite no is, is what you describe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks a little little strange sometimes, but <laughs> he's so cute. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Just a quick reminder, if you're listening over on audio only, please head on over to either Apple or Spotify and leave the show up to a five-star review, especially if you're enjoying it, if you've seen a health benefit or if it has made your life better in some kind of way. I would love if you go and review the show, share it out with a friend or family member. If you are on YouTube, leave us a comment and like this video. I really wanna to continue to get this information out to as many people as possible. This is mostly the things that I talk about here on the show are completely free to implement. So please do share this out, give the show a review, share it in a Facebook group, Instagram post. I am forever grateful for the support of this community in this show and hope to continue bringing you more and more content. I have free resources on my website. If you're interested in diving into some of my work that is always available and you can go to my website, www.sarahkleinerwellness.com and go to the free resources page. I have over five different eBooks on everything from water to blue blockers, how to use them properly and how to build your perfect quantum day for optimal health. All of those are completely free to download and available on my website on that free resources page. So make sure to check that out. All right, let's jump back into today's show. Yeah, and that's, I know that's an issue I've had is the crowded teeth. And of course, none of this was known. I'm 44, I'll be 45 in June. It's like, none of this was taught, never, you know, as everything was very standard. When I got to be about 14 years old, my teeth were getting even more overcrowded. And so what did they do? They did a surgery, put me under, and then pulled out my wisdom teeth that hadn't even grown in yet. They like surgically removed them, removed some of my molars, and then my teeth are still still crowded. And I'm like, so bra braces are clearly not, I think, the solution for people. Uh, and pulling teeth is not the solution either. I feel like we need to address like the, the structural issues, right? Yeah, I mean, so it, it may be necessary for some people, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and I know that wasn't your intention, but I always want to, yeah. uh, sometimes people push back and like, well, what about this? So in 99% of the 99% of the time, uh, braces and, and uh, dental work should not be required. Mm -hmm. Now it's very unlikely that that's going to happen, right? Cause we don't live in a perfect world. I, I'll give you an example. Right. So, uh, my parents, all my uncles, my grandparents, uh, no cavities, perfect teeth, no dentist. Mm. So you're just kind of like, okay, how does that make sense? Right. Because uh, right. And I, I, fortunately I've never had a cavity myself and I attribute that to mm. how I breathe. My wife has had mm. many cavities and we attribute that okay. to how she used to breathe. So okay. uh, a couple things with um, my parents that I find this interesting and you'll find this interesting as well, is that uh, when you gave your son the toothbrush for the first time, did he brush his teeth or did he chew on the toothbrush? He chewed on it, of course. Right. So yeah. intuitively, that's what we're supposed to do. So my parents grew up not using a toothbrush, which sounds kind of barbaric. They would chew on a, on a, on a leaf, um, not a leaf, a, of a, a branch of a tree. Okay. So every week they'd have, every few days, they'd have these branches delivered to them and they would grab a branch and it'd be the length of a toothbrush and they would chew it. So they would have to chew this tooth, uh, chew this branch until it bristleized the end of it, and then they would brush their teeth with the bristles. And they have perfect teeth. So wow. when you chew, so one of the reasons people's jaws are so small these days is because they don't chew. Right. Our ancestors. And I was like a '90s kid, pop tarts, fat-free snack wells, like lean cuisine. My, you know, kind of a what do they call it? The nineties where the parents just kind of were off at work and they microwave you're, era. You're 10. You can babysit. You can babysit your sisters. You're 10 now, you know, love my parents, but that's just kind of how we were. And it was like, eat whatever packaged processed thing. I had a very nutrient poor diet. 
Um, and I think that that contributed to my jaw not really developing as well as it should have and could have. And nobody forced me to eat uh, meat or chew. I think I've, I've, there's this woman I've been following on uh, online. I can't even think of her name. She's in Australia, but she's been like banging the drum of kids needing to eat uh, jerky. And like the the dry, the meats, the dried meats that we kind of ancestrally would eat those because we weren't always able to get like fresh meat, you know, a fresh kill. And so they would dry the meats and that's what children would grow up eating these like, you know, the meat, the jerkies and having to do all this chewing. And of course, you're getting the nutrients from the meat as well. That's also going to help with the development. But yeah, people are not chewing all of our food is soft and packaged and you know <laughs> all the work's been done right so there's there's very little stimulation of the jaw right. to form correctly and and so you know you combine that with nutrient deficient foods and mm -hmm. then they're density deficient as well so there's no work required it's just a recipe for a disaster when it comes mm -hmm. to facial structure and of course you know our son was drinking healthy smoothies we're so proud of him mm -hmm. for drinking smoothies and you yeah, know, yeah. and, and, um, basically anything blended in the Vitamix or, or in the blend yes. tech was like, yep. like, yep. Oh, like, look, we're getting all this, like all, all these vegetables into him. And, yes. and he doesn't even know that he's eating them. Like that was, that was yeah. like, you know, uh, the jam, but uh, now we realize that had he, and he, he, he was, he was a good eater, but it, yeah. so I don't, it's not, it wasn't him. It was us. We just didn't know better. We didn't know. Like, that's a thing is like, when you know better, you do better. But I think most people, I think that's very, that was like very us in 2012, you know, we got our Vitamix in 2012 and we were making all the smoothies and, you know, didn't really do a whole lot for my health. I start, I was still started struggling with PCOS and my blood sugar was a mess. And I'm like, I was thin, like I, I was able to stay lean, but my blood sugar was a mess. I wasn't getting what I needed nutrient wise. And it wasn't until I switched to more of like an animal based eating approach that I was able to start stabilizing my blood sugar and actually feel like my body was getting what it needed. But I think so many people are still in that. Like we were talking before we turn on the camera, you said like, what is it? Sidewalk street and fast lane with people's knowledge. Is that what you said? Yeah. So, uh, this, and this comes from Scott Olford. So it's the people, some people are on the sidewalk, some people in the slow lane and some people are on the fast lane. Yeah. So there's a lot of people on the sidewalk that still think throwing a ton of stuff into a Vitamix and giving it to their kids is the best thing for them. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the propaganda and messaging that's out there. But what they need to be doing is, is developing the jaw and chewing with nutrient dense foods. Correct. Yeah. I mean, think of a dog, right? So when it, when you give a dog right. a bone, it it's <clears throat> chewing on that bone and it's chewing and pulling, right? It's chewing yep. and pulling. So that act of chewing and pulling pulls the jaw forward. And then the chewing causes the, the, the masseter and all the muscles to form more correctly and the jaw forms wider. So now we have a much bigger uh, sinus cavity, right? So our sinus mm -hmm. cavity is about the size of our fist. So imagine a fist inside your, your skull that's how much volume your sinuses take up. And so anything that compromises that is going to compromise the intake. So if anyone's listening and they're a car buff, the fast, one of the fastest ways to increase uh, the efficient, or not, not necessarily efficiency, but the p power of your engine is to put an air intake on. So you just put a bigger air intake on the engine and now more air can come in and you get more power out of that same engine. So the same thing applies to our bodies. We want to get the air in and we want to pressurize it. Mm -hmm. So the nose, the nose always slows down the air. That's why it always feels easier to breathe through our mouth. The nose is always the purpose of the nose is to slow down the air that's coming in. And by okay. slowing down the air, now now the nasal mucosa can act on it, right? Because the air is interacting with that nasal mucosa. The nose can temperature regulate the air and it can moisture regulate the air. Right. But if the air just goes straight in without going through that process, mm -hmm. then the lungs don't like that either. So, mm. so it's always going to feel like more resistance breathing through our nose. When people say, Oh, it's harder to breathe through my nose. It should be right. That's the whole purpose mm, of it okay. because it's perfecting the air. It's like a little, little air perfecting factory in your, in your head. That's sending the air down into your lungs. Just like, you know, just like when you think about when you um, chew your food versus drink your food, Mm -hmm. Right. When you chew your food, you're preparing the food to mix yes. with the saliva in your mouth, mix, start the digestive, uh, enzymatic digestive process, right. Uh, especially of carbohydrates. 
Like a lot of times people get bloating after they they drink their food because yes. they didn't start that initial digestive process. In right. The mouth, right. So then they're like changing the ingredients, but it's really the process that's broken. So just like if you drink your food instead of chew your food, you know, you're not perfecting the food for the stomach. It's going to cause problems through every step of the process. So the same thing, if you're not perfecting the air that's going into your lungs, now your immune system becomes hyperactive, right? And it's mm -hmm. got to deploy energy and resources. You know, uh, every day, 1200 calories are consumed just to breathe. Oh, wow. So one of the first things we tell people is if you want to live longer, I mean, it's, you see this in the entire animal kingdom, animals and, you know, people that breathe slower live longer. So if anyone mm -hmm. here wants to live longer, just slow down how many breaths you take per minute. A uh, turtle breathes about four breaths per minute, a dog, 35 breaths per minute. Dog wow. ages about seven times faster than a yeah. human. And turtles live into their hundreds. So we see this, if you look at a, a chart, you'll see it's a very clear correlation. So the rate at which we breathe makes a huge difference. So we want to slow down the air that's going in and perfect it and pressurize it. And that's exactly what our nose does for us. Wow. And so if somebody's maybe had like a broken nose, that could really impact their overall health and they've never really gotten it fixed. Is, is that correct? Yeah. So Joe Rogan actually talks about this. He broke his nose many times being in the oh, yeah, mixed fighter. martial arts yeah. and as a fighter. And, and so he would always, his breathing was jacked up for a really long time. And then he finally got his uh, sinuses corrected and started breathing again. And he's like, oh my God, I had no idea what I was missing uh, until I fixed this problem. And so the nose wow. is an interesting organ because if you don't use it, you lose it. So when they put tracheas in mm -hmm. people and have them breathing essentially through their throat, uh, the nose, um, all everything starts closing up in the face. And that makes sense mm -hmm. because the body doesn't like stagnation, right? So if there's no air going through there, then there's more likelihood of infections and other problems happening. So the, you know, the nose starts closing up. Um, and so if people are habitual mouth breathers, it's going to be the same thing for them. The, the nose is the sinuses are going to be a little bit smaller. And, mm. uh, and so as they start breathing in through their, it, it, it's really the mucosa, not the sinuses, the skeletal structure doesn't change. It's, it's the soft tissue inside that starts changing. And so as mm. they start breathing more through the nose, initially it's going to feel like resistance. And then, uh, the, the body starts making adjustments. So then the nose starts opening up. So you, sometimes you okay. just have to give it a bit of time. Yeah, absolutely. So people don't necessarily need to go out and get surgery then if that's happened, or do you think it could be helpful in some circumstances? Yeah, definitely. There's, there's a few different procedures that can be done. I haven't had this done. I would, I have a slightly deviated septum. And so if I, if I really start getting into my breathing paces, you'll see one of my nostrils flares and the other one doesn't. And so, you know, that means I'm getting a little bit more air in one versus the other. And what's also interesting is our body shifts from side to side. So some people might notice at certain times of the day, my left nostril is more clogged up and others, yes, uh, the right side. I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually the nervous system regulating itself because okay. when you breathe through your left nostril, it's like hitting the brakes. Parasympathetic. Yes. Right? And when you breathe through your right yep. nostril, it's like putting your foot on the gas. So your body is like, you know, kind of unconsciously, it's regulating your nervous system through which nostril you're breathing through. So for yeah, some- I remember as a yoga teacher for like 13 years, we do the alternate nostril and it's like Ida and Pingala. So you know the different nadis and with the left side is the feminine moon and then the right side is the more masculine, like, yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. And the way I remember it, it's, it's easy for a lot of people is your gas pedal is on the right-hand side. Mm. And so if you want to go, you breathe through your right nostril and your brakes are on the left-hand side. So if you want to relax or calm down, then you breathe through your left nostril. And if you want to have balance, you breathe between both. So you go back and forth from one to the other. And, the, and so the nervous okay. system and the body is kind of naturally doing that throughout the day. And so if people notice that, that's, that's normal. Uh, however, if people do have, to answer your question, if people do have uh, deviated septums or broken mm -hmm. noses, it's probably good to get that evaluated because there's a mm. spectrum of deviation. There's a spectrum of, you know, uh, brokenness, I guess. And so it's probably good to, to see an ENT. Uh, and I would also in, guide people to see a airway focused dentist. So an, a dentist mm. who's not just focused on the teeth, but is also focused on how your airway is developing. And that's, that's who my yeah. son sees. 
Yeah. And that's more of kind of a functional doctor. You're not necessarily going to find like a, a standard doctor doing that kind of work or is it a little bit more accepted these days. Uh, I encourage people to go to a website. It's called askthedentist.com. Okay. And they can find practitioners who are airway centric on that website and I'll more sure information too. in the show notes. Okay, good, good. So teeth, all these things are important when we're looking at, and the structure of the nose, when we're looking at our overall health and we're looking at, uh, how our body is able to function, essentially the metabolism. Am I right about that? So if you're someone who feels like you have a really like slow metabolism, this element of how you're breathing could absolutely impact that, correct? Yeah. So I, I just want to maybe clarify um, nomenclature because I think that would be helpful for people. Yes. Uh, so, so there's no such thing as a fast or slow metabolism. There's an Agreed. efficient or inefficient metabolism. Agreed. Yes. And so your body does exactly what you tell it to do. And, and so it's our body's metabolism is constantly reacting and in flux. It's constantly changing based on the signals that it's receiving. So many of us, because of the way we breathe, we're stuck in fight or flight. And mm -hmm. when we're stuck in fight or flight, we're gassing our adrenal glands, which are basically our fight or flight response glands. And we're under activating our thyroid hormone. So our thyroid hormone that's being produced either gets blocked and turned into blocked at the receptor or converted into something called reverse T3. Mm. And the pituitary gland stops making thyroid hormone because why would it make more thyroid and more cortisol at the same time? It can only use one. Yes. So, so they, so it's like a driver, right? So if we need to get somewhere fast, I'm in the driver's seat. If we want to, you know, if it's not so important, right, then my wife is in the driver's seat. So, okay. you know, you can't have two people driving at the same time. You can have backseat drivers, right? But right. Uh, you, you, you know, that person who's in the driver's seat is that one person. So our breath actually also regulates which hormone we're utilizing. So it, it plays such a, a fascinating and interesting effect on every area of our body. So I'll give, uh, I'll give people some, some nuggets to walk away with. So every day we consume 30 pounds of air. You only consume a couple mm. of pounds of food. With every breath we take, there's more molecules of oxygen than grains of sand on the entire planet. Every day we take 23,000 breaths, about 500 milliliters each uh, in and out. So there's about uh, 23,000 liters of air that go in and out of our body every day. The biggest lymph nodes in your body are underneath your diaphragm. The diaphragm, as it moves up and down, serves as a lymphatic pump and it massages all of your internal organs and helps detoxify them. So detoxification is based on lymphatic drainage, which is based mm -hmm. on how we breathe. 70% uh, of our toxins in our body are eliminated through our lungs. So you can't detox properly unless you're learning to breathe correctly. Oh our gosh. blood pressure wow. is regulated by our breathing. Our nervous system is regulated by our breathing. Our emotions are regulated by our breathing. So I can change the, uh, the chemistry of your brain by changing your breath. In fact, the nervous system goes to the breath as the first thing to change when it's trying to change our physical state. So if a lion walked into my room, the first thing I would do is gasp. So my lungs expand rapidly. And that squeezes my heart, that shoots blood into my arms and legs so I can run away from whatever is chasing me. And then every breath I'm taking, then now I'm ventilating at a super fast pace is pumping blood physically, you know, helping my heart to pump that blood. Our diaphragm is known as the second heart. 40% of our blood pressure comes from our diaphragm working correctly. So somebody has hypertension, they probably don't have a blood pressure problem. They probably have a weak diaphragm problem. Mm. Super easy muscle to fix. It's the mm. only muscle that is working 24 seven, whether you like it or not, it's always on. Uh, the fastest way to slow down the aging process is to slow down our breath. When somebody reduces calorie intake, we also encourage them to reduce their breath intake mm -hmm. because now, you know, if somebody breathes a third less, which the average person overbreathes, by the way, and sounds weird, but yeah. it's true. Uh, so the average person overbreathes, which means that if they were to slow down their breath, then let's say they were to slow it down a third, they could consume 400 less calories a day and without going into a catabolic state. So just wow. by slowing down our breathing, if we're fasting or doing things like that, to reduce the amount of catabolism we go into, which is where we start wasting muscle and other tissues, mm -hmm. we just slow down our breathing. 
So that's one way to, you know, lean into a fast if you're doing it. For every 10 pounds that we lose, 8.4 of those pounds are through the lungs. So the byproduct of cellular respiration and metabolism, um, as I mentioned earlier, is CO2 and water. So where does the weight go? They asked a group of scientists and medical doctors and other healthcare professionals, where does the weight go? When you, when you burn fat, where does it go? Virtually nobody got the right answer, including the respiratory therapists. They thought that we poop it out or we sweat it out, but we actually pee it out and breathe it out. So oh, wow. key contributor to our oral health as well as our breath, number one cause of cavities. And it's the, uh, the way we breathe, the way we position our tongue is one of the most important uh, tools that we have to create the right facial structure, which creates the right sinus structure, which creates the right airway structure for us and promotes good dental health and, and wellness. And then one last thing I'll say is that the, uh, the breath is, is really so simple and that's by mm. design. Right. So if all you did was breathe correctly and all of these other dominoes could fall for you without you having to think about any of them or work on any of them or supplement for any of them, then imagine how fast people can get healthy. It's easy to measure results for people. And it's wonderful to see that everyone has already has the apparatus. You don't have to go buy anything. You don't have mm -hmm. to order anything online. There's nothing to download. You already have all the equipment that you need. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to even sell you. We just have to teach you how to use it and everything else automatically falls into place. It's amazing. It's so amazing. And I think it's really empowering for people too, because what you said about the detoxing thing, I'm like, oh my gosh, so many people are just spending all their money on all these detoxes and cleanses and this, that, and the other. And I always say you have to have the fundamentals down of like circadian and quantum health, like if you're going to do that. But if they're not breathing correctly, like <laughs> it's kind of a waste for them to be spending all this money on those protocols, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, breath is life, right? And it's, it's really yeah. a lifestyle. So what we, you know, what we want to, what I want to do, and, and I know that this, uh, this conversation hopefully is helping people increase their intrigue. Uh, and again, even today, we're just scratching the surface of what I can talk about and we're just scratching the surface of what there is to talk about. So this right. is, uh, you know, uh, you know, a topic that I think, um, is long overdue for people to know more about. And, uh, I just love being able to put it in a way that I hope people understand it. Definitely. Well, real quick, before we kind of wrap, I'd love to know, like you, you mentioned in the very beginning, how you can kind of tell right away if somebody is a, a good breather or a not so good breather, how do you assess that? Is that anything you can really explain or is that like kind of a complicated question? No. Well, first of all, we want to pay attention to their breathing signature. So if you're ever having a conversation with somebody, you can tell whether that person feels safe or whether they feel stressed uh -huh. based on their breathing. And because most people breathe unconsciously, it's a true sign of how they feel. So if somebody, for example, is breathing through their mouth, you know that they're stressed out. If somebody is holding their breath, they're probably stressed out. Or if somebody is you know, calmly breathing through their nose, right, then they're probably feeling safe. Uh, you can also tell if somebody wants to have that conversation or not. So when I speak mm -hmm. to my wife, and I, and I say something to her, I might ask her something. I know that if she exhales, she doesn't want to have that conversation. <laughs> but if she inhales, right, then I know her nervous system is leaning into the conversation. So mm -hmm. just by paying attention to how people breathe, we can, we can know, should I have this conversation now or not? Is this the right time or not? You can listen to their Love nervous that. system and it'll tell you. And then if you're sitting next to somebody, right, their breathing should be inaudible. It should be into the belly right? Should mm. feel soft uh, versus feeling labored. And the ideal breath, the breath that I lean into is six seconds in, six seconds out. Mm. So a count of six in and a count of six out, that's called coherence breathing. And so mm. if you ever, if I, when I'm trying to catch myself breathing, which is often throughout the day, then that's the breath that I go back to. That's my baseline breath. So that's called coherence breathing. Coherence breathing helps relax our nervous system. And it also helps us uh, increase oxygenation to the brain. So great way to breathe when you're sitting doing an interview like this, great way to breathe when you're on a Zoom call, great way to breathe when you're checking email, great way to breathe when you're watching a movie, 
right? This breath brings us into the present moment and allows us to stay present and focused. I love that. And you had mentioned kind of before we turned on the recording, maybe doing a little breathing demo or exercise for, for the listeners. Would you still want to do that? Uh, here's what I'd love to do. Uh, I have a recording of mm -hmm. a, of an entire 90 minute breathing experience. Ooh. And nice. I also have a series of tools that I'd like to share with people. Uh, which goes into different breathing signatures. And these breathing signatures tell you how to breathe in specific situations. So I'll, I'd love to share that, but I would I also like that. to share. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I, but I, what I'd love to share now, if, if, uh, if you're okay with it, is a really powerful breathing technique called a physiologic sigh. Okay. And a physiologic sigh is probably the most useful form of breathing that people can use, especially for those people who are feeling strained or stressed or they just need to have a hard stop and reset. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is called a physiologic sigh. And it's really simple. We just sit up and I, I'll walk, walk people through it and we can do it together. So yeah. the first thing we do is we just find a nice comfortable uh, position. We want to always, uh, to breathe correctly, we always want to have nice uh, loose fitting garments, right? We don't want to have a tight cinched belt or anything like that. Um, and so we're going to breathe into our bellies, into our lungs, and then into our throat. So it's a three-step breath. And so I'll demonstrate. Our tongue is gently placed at the roof of our mouth. Works better if you close your eyes. Breathe in through the nose, into the belly, and then into the lungs with a few sharp breaths. And then into the throat. And in this case, I'm going to breathe through my mouth. Three sharp breaths. And then I'm holding at the top. And what I like to do here is I like to squeeze my pelvic floor. And imagine that I'm pushing some toothpaste up my spine. So I'm kind of squeezing this toothpaste up my entire spine, feeling that energy coming up. And then whenever you feel ready, you let it out with a nice, uh, long, audible sigh and, and really just kind of drop the shoulders and lean into it. So it might look and sound like this. <sighs> mm. So we're using the sigh as a tool. Uh, the body already uses a sigh. When we feel a sense of relief, we sigh. And so yes. we're actually exaggerating that, you know, so that we're signaling to our nervous system, this is how um, I want you to feel. I want you to feel relaxed, calm, and safe. And so when we do that uh, five times, within, within just the first two times, people almost instantaneously feel different. So we can try that right now. Uh, how about I walk you through it, Sarah, and uh, sure. and you can try it for yourself. So we're going to have you sit up nice and straight with a nice relaxed abdomen, tongue gently placed at the roof of your mouth. And you're going to take a nice deep breath in through the nose, really feeling the air, paying attention to the air as it goes into your nose, fills starting at the bottom of your belly, filling that up as much as you can. And then take another sharp sip of air through the nose to fill up the lungs and then one to three sips of air through the mouth to fill up the throat. And now let's squeeze a pelvic floor. Imagine you're squeezing a tube of toothpaste up your spine. Keep holding your breath. Imagine that this toothpaste is gold and light coming up your spine, filling up your abdomen, your chest, your throat, your head, bursting out of the top of your head. And when you feel ready, you can let it out with an audible sigh. Beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, that was nice. So doing that a few times will, will instantly change your physical state and you'll feel calm. You'll feel a reset. It's kind of like hitting the reset button yeah. on your computer. Everything just seems to work Feels a little that bit way. better. Just, yeah. Nice. I love that. I love that. Thank you. So that's just, that's just one of the tools. There's different, you mm -hmm. know, tools that you can do. Some of them are, are more subtle than that. Um, you know, and some you can do while you're driving, there's different mm -hmm. ways you can breathe when you're having a conversation, different ways you can breathe to help other people feel safe. Uh, other way, mm -hmm. different ways that you can breathe to help you sleep better at night, ways to breathe, to replace caffeine and coffee. So, mm. so there's uh, so there's ways that we can use our breath to do a variety of different, uh, or call our body into a variety of different actions if we wanted to. Awesome. 
Well, I'm excited and I'm going to make sure we get all those resources for people because I know they're going to love those. They're absolutely going to love those and dive into your work more. And if someone's just driving, listening to this and they want to find you, they're like, all right, I got to find this guy right away. What's, <laughs> what's a quick and easy way for them to find you in your work? Yeah. So specifically for breathing, they can go to breathworkwithsachin.com. And if they want to find me on social media, um, you can find me at Sachin Patel uh, on Facebook and also on Instagram. I'm mostly on Facebook. That's where you get the raw, unfiltered version of me. Nice. Well, I'll make sure I link all that in the show notes as well so people can find you. And this has been a really, really fun conversation. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate the opportunity and I, I hope your listeners found value. I'm sure they will. Thank you so much for listening to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. If you did enjoy the show, make sure to head on over to Apple or Spotify. Leave the show up to a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, give us a like, leave us a comment. And thank you again so much for listening. Head to my website to get free resources. As always, it's www.sarahkleinerwellness.com free resources tab. And just a quick reminder, none of the show is medical advice or meant to be taken as a substitute for getting in-person medical care. So please don't take anything that we say here on the show as medical advice. Thanks again for listening. Thank you to Viva Rays, code Yogi to save on their blue blockers, eye masks, earplugs, and low EMF headphones and upgraded formulas absolutely love their mineral supplements and their hair tissue mineral analysis test code yogi12 or yogi to save there thanks again for listening or watching today's episode whichever one you did and i look forward to speaking with you again soon